I read the runes. You lose. Blood will spill. Keep your distance. Makers guide me. They come for the scroll. Time dwindles. Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. So we are playing Rise today, and that's because I want to show you the new Ingenious Hunter. Um, it got buffed today, so it can actually end up giving you 50 item haste um, when you have it fully stacked, and that's insanely OP. Just the base item haste, um, it's doubled. And what it means is that, for example, Sonya's Hourglass, it has like 120 second cooldown. When you have this rune fully stacked, guys, then it will drop to 80 second cooldown, and that's absolutely insane. It's a rune you want to use on those champs that have multiple item actives in their kit. Um, so Rice is of course a good example because he uses Everfrost, and then he also has this on his hourglass. So this rune can also be used on other champs like the Twisted Fate because he has a similar build. But Ultimate Hunter is um, also really good on him. So you might be going for that instead, but we also have something like a Vagar. So you can use this on mages and I think people will start abusing it soon because this new Ingenious Hunter is absolutely insane guys, so you should definitely try it out and see how strong it is because late game, when you have Sonya's Hourglass on such a low cooldown, you can use it multiple times to block out really important abilities like ultimates. And also the thing is, they nerfed Ravnus Hunter once again, for absolutely no reason. This rune was already awful after they nerfed it the last time, but they decided to nerf it again, so... Pretty much no champ can use it now. Um, I think the only few champs who use it right now is Timo and then maybe Cassiopeia. That's why uh, even on Ryze, you used to abuse your Ravnus Hunter, you're also going for something else now. And that's why the Ingenious Hunter comes in. But of course, we need to get a stack first. Landing phase on Rise. It is a scaling champ, but you can still play aggressive early game. But the thing is, this game we played against a duo, mid, and a jungle. Um, the Katarina and the Talon duo queuing. So you know what happens. If you play too aggressive, you will get camped, so that's why we played it a bit safe this game. Your recall timing on this jam, guys, you want to do it at a when you have enough gold for the tier, that's fine because you do have the teleport up so you can always get back to lane in time. Remember when you play this champ, make sure that you weave in those Qs because they are going to reset every single time you use your W and your E. Very important to maximize the DPS output, TP back to lane. Um, the thing is when you get a couple items just like one, Mythic item, then your wave clip becomes really good, um, so you can start that AFK showing playstyle. Ingenious Hunter, of course, the entire Hunter rune pages um, doesn't do much until you have them fully stacked, so it's important that you try to get those stacked as soon as possible, um, so they can really start helping you out. Now this matchup is pretty interesting, uh, because your W can be a root as long as you time it with your E. Um, it doesn't really work against the Katarina because she can still use her ultimate while she's rooted. It is not a stun, so it is not going to cancel out her ult. So Katarina can do well in this matchup, but we can also kite her around. So remember, in order to get the root on this champ, you want to use E first and then W on that E mark, and that's how you get the root, and that's how you kite people around. Make sure you abuse that extra bonus movement speed you get as well. Um, you also have the face thrust, even though they nerfed that one as well. Not this patch, but that was a while ago, but it still does have a higher cooldown. So you want to push the waves fast, E the entire wave, and then Q to them. Um, so it's gonna spread and deal that bonus damage. Um, that helps you wave clearing extremely fast, makes it a lot easier for you to push out the waves and then you can do whatever you want to. She had ignite here so we also ended up dying, um, but the thing is we are a scaling champ and she is not, so that's fine for us. 
you're not really losing a lot. Um, so if you're trading kills, that's all right. We just have to make sure that she is not getting a ton of free kills while we're just dying for no reason. Lucidity boots, another really OP item. Um, I think those are by far the best boots in the game, but sometimes you really want those uh, Merc Treads if they have a lot of CC. If they don't, then it's completely fine to go for these boots. Because you get a lot of um, haste, which is absolutely insane because it also works on your teleport and your flash, so you put those abilities or summoner spells on a lower cooldown. Thing is, um, this ingenious hunter also works on Predator. Um, you're playing a champ that runs that as the main keystone. Twist the Fate can also do that, uh, so that also works, but if you do that, then that's also going to be put on a lower cooldown, so you can really um, abuse this extra item haste you get from Ingenious Hunter. Um, it really makes a big difference once you start um, getting it stacked. The thing is, um, it doesn't really help when the enemy champions try to hide behind the minions because you can just use the E flux to mark the entire wave and then you can deal that bonus damage because it is still going to spread to the enemy champ. So hiding inside a minion wave is not the optimal solution against uh, this champ. We are sitting on 3 kills, so of course it's going great towards stacking that Ingenious Hunter up. So when you get Everfrost, I think it has a base cooldown of 30 seconds. Um, it had lower, but they nerfed it of course a while ago because it was so OP. But this Ingenious Hunter pretty much nullifies that nerf. And you know what happened back then when um, Everfrost was OP is that every mage tried to abuse it. And now that you can get it back to that low cooldown, you can already see how OP it is going to be again. But just try to E the minion in the middle of the wave, which is the cannon minion, because then you can make that flock spread to all the minions and then queue them to deal that empower, empower damage and that's going to help you out clearing out the waves insanely fast. And this um, bonus damage is going to increase every single time you put a point into your ultimate, so that's why it's a scaling champ. Also, mana is an incredibly important stat on this champ. He has low cooldown on his abilities, so you'll be spamming your abilities a lot, but also because of his passive, that will turn bonus mana into um, more damage. That's incredibly important that you get the tier every single time you play Rise and of course make sure that you upgrade it. You don't have to upgrade it as your second item. You know right after the um, Everfrost you can delay it if you want to but it's really good to have that upgraded as soon as possible. When you're laying against a Katarina, the way you play against her is that of course you try to bait out the daggers first. They are going to um, be thrown right behind you. So it's important that you don't walk in a straight line, but like walk to the sides as well after that Q is going to drop. So you make sure that she's losing out on a lot of damage because if she does not hit you with the daggers on the ground, then she's going to lose out on a lot. Your ultimate can be used to get back to lane faster, but it's also really good for roaming. Um, the way you use it guys is that you want to use it behind the enemy champion, so in the direction you think they will be escaping towards, because then you can use that to cut off their escape path. So they'll pretty much end up running into you, and that's when you can use that EW to get that root off, to get that CC, and then hopefully your teammates should be able to catch up. So that was the EW, and as you can see, she is not able to move around. And as soon as you get that Everfrost, then that CC becomes even more obnoxious. So we teleported subside because we thought that Dikiana needed help, but it seems like she 
played that pretty well, um, so that was kind of a waste. But if you teleport and don't get anything like kills or assists, then make sure that you get the XP at least from the minion waves and then maybe a tower blade as well. So you don't end up wasting such an important summoner spell for nothing. So we got the Evil Frost, that's the big power spike. And of course it has incredible synergy. With the Ingenious Hunter, um, it has a base cooldown of 30 seconds and that is going to be 20 seconds after we have our rune fully stacked. So that's 10 seconds off, that means that in a team fight you should be able to use this multiple times. You would not be able to do this if you did not have this rune. So you get a spell that can root, you are able to use that multiple times meaning that you get a lot more free CC in a fight and that can really help you turn those fights around. As you can see, Double Roots does nothing against the Katarina while she's in her ultimate that needs to be real CC like the Sun because that is the only thing that is going to cancel out her ultimate. So that's why she can do really well against the um, Rise. And we missed the Q right here, that's why the Talon survived. Um, so that's a big mistake on our part. It can be hard to hit against mobile champs. Like the Katarina and the Talon. So I'll try to like predict where they're going to dash and such before you really um, throw out that Q. Because if you miss it then you are going to lose out on a lot of damage. And Poppy is of course the perfect pick against those Assassins and carries with a lot of um, dashes. Not against Katarina, but helps a lot against the Yone um, because of his uh, Q, his C as well. It also works against the Talon, so Poppy is a really good pick against those annoying mobile champs. So the way you use the Everfrost, guys, um, I used it too early right here, um, but. It comes out a bit slower than your main CC combo, so in order to get a guaranteed second root off, you want to use E, W first, and then follow up with a Q of course. You can also start with a Q, so you go like Q, E, W, Q, and then you use the Air Frost for a second root, and then you do that combo again. That's gonna keep them locked up in place for such a long time, so if it's any squishy in a team fight, then that is enough to kill them off. We got the second point into ultimate that is going to increase the overload damage once again. So level 11 is a big power spike and then the last one comes in at level 16, where you get the maximum amount of damage from that overload um, Q. So this is the point where Ryze becomes a very strong champ, but he's still very squishy and it's a short range champ that means that he can be abused, especially into those uh, compositions that have a lot of uh, long range champs, you know like the Velkos, the Six, the Sarath, because they will be able to poke you out from afar and then you can't really do much. So it's a champ that can be a really good split pusher and also a good team fighter depending on the team composition and the enemy team composition. Um, if you don't have a very good team fighting comp then you just go to the side lane um, because um, you're very strong in 1 vs 1s as well. Um, you can fight a lot of bruisers which a lot of other mages will not be able to do. So split pushing is an option. Because if multiple people come towards you, you have your ultimate to escape. You're also very strong in 1 versus 1s because of your low cooldown high DPS kit. And then of course you also have great wake and that's all you need. Those three things are what you need to become a strong split pusher. So it's the usual thing that you don't really want to be grouped up all the time. Um, especially as a mid laner will teleport because you will just end up wasting time losing XP and gold. Um, so that's why I like to stay in the silence a lot. 
and then I only try to group if there's a big team fight starting or if there's an objective up that we can secure. Otherwise, try to spend as much time in the sidelines as possible. Um, that's how you get those high CS numbers. Um, you see high elo players. We are getting those high CS numbers a lot, very often, even in the games that we are losing. And that's because we know how to uh, bounce the waves, pick them up in the sidelines and also get farm from the uh, jungle monsters. So the second power spike is when you have that Archangels uh, stacked. We have fully stacked here, so we just need the item as well. And you can see that Everfrost cooldown is so low. That really does make a big difference in those uh, team fights that's going to start in the mid game to late game. Bryce is a split pusher, guys. As always, always get into a sideline. If your teammates are getting caught, then try to predict it before it happens and then you can move in advance. But otherwise, sideline at all times. Pull the minions closer to each other so the um, E mark will be applied to all of them. And then one Q is going to completely delay, uh, delete the minion wave. There are a couple champs who have um, this wave clearing potential, but there are very... I don't think there are other champs that have this wave clear on a low cooldown though. Um, that's Rice. And that's why um, he can get prior in lane as well, even though he's a scaling champ, because he has such low cooldown on his wave clearing abilities that when the scuttle fight starts, then you can just show in the wave, and then you can also help out your jungler, secure the skull crap, and then you can use that to snowball with. You see, we're not wasting any time helping with the uh, Rift Herald. They can easily do that by themselves. So really make sure that we get as much time as possible to get those uh, waves in the sideline. Because that is how you stay ahead. Rice is really easy to farm with as well. So there's really no excuse for having low CS per minute on this champ. So you should aim for minimum 7 CS per minute. And if you can do that um, as a low yield player, then you're going to climb really fast because um, even if you don't get a lot of kills, then you'll still be even gold-wise because people in low elo don't really focus that much on farming. They're mostly playing for the kills. Um, so even if your opponent has like two or three kills and you don't have anything, as long as you make sure to stay up in farm, then you can still be just as relevant or have even more impact than them. Look at that absolutely insane damage spike you get as soon as you get that Seraph's Embrace um, transformed. The AoE damage is absolutely ridiculous on Ryze. Um, you play him like an AD carry so you don't frontline because you just get focused down. You are immobile. Um, you can use that passive proc to get that bonus movement speed but you don't have any dashes and so on. So if people hit you with one CC ability then they're gonna chain it and then you're gonna die as well. Just stay in the back line like an AD carry and then you just hit the target in front of you. Um, you can kite them with your own AD carry, you know, try to focus one target down and then you go to the next. Yeah. Thing is, even if you don't have a lot of damage, um, if you're falling super far behind, it doesn't really matter that much because you still provide utility. You have the double roots, you have the EW and then you also have the Everfrost active. That's now on a very low cooldown because it's fully stacked. So it means that you can peel for your AD carry. Um, if he's the fed one and you're the one running it down, you can still peel for them like in support and then you can try to catch up by getting those uh, last hits. You can see how obnoxious it is when you have this amount of CC guys. The enemy champ is not able to move at all. EW into the Everfrost that's perma CC and Everfrost is almost up again. This is the power of the new Ingenious Hunter and that's why I highly recommend that you try it out. 
It can be used on any mage actually, um, not just Rise, um, you have Vagar and MV as well. Even Twisted Fate, even though uh, Ultimate Hunter is also really good on him because of his ultimate. You can use it on any mage, so I think this is something that will um, start getting picked up soon and abused as well. Um, when people realize how much item haste you really get from this one room. Remember that you want to stay in the backline, um, you also are very easy to burst down, you're pretty squishy even though you can itemize pretty tanky uh, as well. On this champ you can build um, Frozen Heart for example and those items works because you get um, uh, mana and mana on Ryze means more damage because of the passive so that's also an option if you play against a lot of AD champs. We are pretty much far into the mid game. When you have teleport up, then focus on staying in the sideline. And then, if your teammates do get caught, then you do have that teleport so you can TP and help them out. You can see this Shone is not able to do anything whatsoever with the Poppy and the Rise as well. That also means that as soon as you finish that Arrow Frost, um, even though you can kill your opponent in a 1 vs 1 uh, sometimes, then you're still very good at setting up jungle kings. So if you think that that's a free kill in the mid lane, then spam ping your jungler and ask him to come and help you out. Because that's going to mean pretty much a guaranteed kill because of the amount of CC you have. So even if they have flash up, then they should not be able to escape. Really abusing that passive and the face rush, Um, you can see how much mobility we get, also become really good at kiting and that allowed us to get that kill on the Talon. We have enough gold for the Sonya Sourglass and that's another item that benefits from those um, ingenious Hunter buffs. So I think the base cooldown on Sonya Sourglass is 2 minutes, but with a fully stacked rune then it should be something like 80 seconds or something, so you're getting like 40 seconds cooldown cut off just from one rune alone and that's really really OP. Because um, a lot of those impactful ultimates in the later stages will have around that timer on the ultimates, uh, maybe a bit more like the um, Kazus ultimate that's going to be more than a minute. But it means that every single time they're going to use that ultimate then your Sonya's Hourglass will be ready. That would not be the case if you did not have the Ingenious Hunter. So that item is actually already really OP just because of the active and now you're able to use it even more often to counter all of those high impact ultimates. You know even an ultimate like the Talons you can also counter that every single time it's up so it's going to become a lot harder for AD Assassins to find kills on you in the sideline. Um, even though some of them will have way lower than 60 second cooldown on the ultimates like the set. It still does benefit you a lot, especially in those team fights. So by the time we get to the dragon, then Sonya's Hourglass will be ready once again. That's of course awesome, so you have that extra safety tool, so even if you don't have the flash up, then you still have that active. I think this jam is pretty difficult to play probably. Um, it's like his combos are not that hard, it's more that he's short ranged, so whenever you are within range of damaging somebody, they can also return damage against you, so it's more about the knowledge part and the positioning. Um, you know exactly when you can win um, those fights and also when the opponent is going to jump on you so you can react accordingly. You can see it is very annoying playing assassins against Urias, now we got the level 16, that's the final power spike 
the final big power spike that is going to increase the overload damage to the maximum potential. That means you hit multiple champions with an E and a Q in a fight, they're going to lose more than half their HP. And that's a guaranteed win, pretty much. Look at that damage, and then of course we also have the Infernal Soul, and that is the perfect soul to have on these mages, those scaling champs with a lot of damage in the later stages, because that is going to amplify that. I really make sure that people do get one shot. Setting a lot of gold right now. Um, these three items are like the core items you get every single game. Um, the only thing that changes is when you get them. Um, you can for example delay the Sonya's Hourglass if you don't need it right now. But you will always be getting them when you reach full build. So core items, Everfrost, Archangel Staff and the Sonya's Hourglass. And then next up you can get Void Staff if they have a lot of um, MR. You can also get Morel Nomicon if they have a lot of healing, otherwise you go for Rabadons. Because for a damage power spike then Rabadons is of course the item that gives you the highest possible damage output because it gives the most amount of AP. And that's something we can abuse. But if they have a lot of healing then you also want to get the Morel Nomicon. And right now we are going for the Admiral Nomicon because as you can see we are playing against the Bit AD carry and they also have Yone and they also have Talon with the Gordringer so you know they do have a bunch of healing. The Katarina also heals with the ultimate so it's very good to deny that as well because then they're really losing out on a lot of stats. And because you have AoE damage then you are able to proc that anti-healing on multiple people. The only problem here is that you don't have any sustain anymore because they nerfed the Ravnus Hunter so it's not really an optimal rune anymore so you're losing out on a lot of that late game sustain that you would otherwise have but in exchange you get more power in a fight. You get more utility as well through the item um, haste. So you get to do more in a direct team fight. Pretty much. That way clear is so satisfying on this champ. Um, that's part of what makes him so fun to play. It's always fun to play those champs that can way clear insanely fast and also have that way clearing ability on a low cooldown. We're not wasting any time by going mid. You can see we're constantly looking for those minion waves so you can stay up in farm. Um, you can easily get 10 CS per minute on, on this champ uh, if you really want to. Um, you do that by also farming the Raptors during the laning phase uh, because that also gives you a lot of gold and increases those um, CS numbers. And then you also you can take away any monster camps because you can do them pretty fast. You have low cooldown on your ability, so that's absolutely no issues whatsoever. So make sure to do that as well, especially if it's the enemy jungle, because then you also deny the enemy team. So I got caught off guard by his um stopwatch and that's of course a normal item that Yone builds at this point in the game but if I did not have the Sonic Hourglass right now then I would have died uh, because that mark turned black that means that I'll get executed so Sonic Hourglass is definitely a big lifesaver but if he did not have that stopwatch then you can see how fast he got boosted down and he was also locked up in place so he was not able to move so that's some really nice counterplay you have to this uh, build. Just keep split pushing here. Um, if they fight, you don't always have to move. If you can get the tower, then that's also really worth it. In this case, they are winning because now we are that far ahead that it doesn't really matter what they're doing. 
But this is the power of the ingenious hunter and also this build that should be used with it if you're using this rune. So that was it for this video. Um, I hope this was helpful and definitely try out this new rune. Um, as always, thanks for watching and see you all in the next one.